that is a good to go. Under 45 minutes, not bad. Okay, hold up, almost forgot to switch off this noisy ass fan. Okay, that's good to go. Anyways, what's up fam, Rahim here and welcome to another Friday episode. Now, in the last episode, I mentioned that my Cap RC Mark 4 HD5, now that was a mouthful, it gave me some reception issues. I've considered that it may be the drone giving reception issues, but when I spoke to Brian, he mentioned that actually that area of the fly zone will normally give bad reception for drones. So, nonetheless, it's okay. I'm gonna get on wrenching. This guy is gonna go on the bench. I'm gonna strip it apart, give it a good clean and servicing, and I'll walk you through as what are the parts that make up a racing drone. So this is a 5 inch racing drone so I'm gonna cover some of the tools that I'll be using to take this thing apart. Um, one of which is a must have is a 2mm hex driver and also for some of the screws are gonna be a 1.5mm hex driver. I'm gonna just stand by also a 2.5 and a 3mm hex driver. Good to have are tweezers a magnetic container if you have one if not just a normal container will do and also some um, cutters for you to cut off any cable ties if need be of course you'll need a brush um, for myself I'm using also tissues and some lighter fluid to wipe off those areas that are non-sensitive definitely you're not going to be using lighter fluid on your flight controller itself and then at the end of it all you may discover that you are short of some parts then you'll need spare parts some screws or nuts and bolts and then also some cable ties to yeah I just got simple like Daiso um, short cable ties. I'm going to be using a power tool and also hex driver bits to just attach on and then loosen or tighten the screws but most of the time halfway only because the final part I will rather use hand tools to tighten them up so that I don't break the threads. Okay let's get wrenching. I'm going to remove the GoPro mount first. This is where I discovered that there was one missing screw and that's where the spare parts come in. And another missing screw. Okay, so now the top cover is off. The big silver block that you see here is actually the DJI Air Unit. Now, this is your digital unit that uh, gives the video signal. And also, it doubles up as a receiver for the DJI um, FPV RC. But I'm not using the DJI FPV RC because I didn't commit to it. I already have my... Um, old transmitter so I'm using a separate signal I'll talk about that in a later as we remove the parts I really like the Mark 4 because it's in this H configuration and it's actually a bind and fly now what you see here is right out of the box I didn't need to build this it's good to go and it flies great now something to note here is that the air unit actually records internally HD right from this camera for having this camera right up front means that the footage that you're gonna get is not gonna have propellers in view now that's awesome okay gonna remove the whole air unit and also the 3d printed mounts so that we can have a look at the other parts of this drone by the way the air unit is a big bulky item that doesn't necessarily fit all um, 5 inch drones so sometimes you may want something smaller options out there are like the Cadex Vista kit and of course, there is a trade-off to that. You'll have one lesser antenna and also the Vista does not have internal recording. So now is a good time for me to check the connections. It's as simple as just plugging in and plugging out just to see that it's all firmly attached. Okay, so far antennas look good. Okay, maybe I'll just put this aside for further cleaning and then let's get on to the rest of the drone. Alright, that's good to go. Gonna set that aside. Um, just to mention also that these mounts were already part of the kit. There was nothing that I needed to print here. It's all good. So with the visual aspect of the drone put aside, now what's left is the electronics and the mechanical parts of the drone. I'm gonna fully remove them so that I can have um, full access to clean the frame and then we'll talk more about the parts in itself. This is where I'd say Gap RC put much thought into building this drone and designing it because there are these 3D printed mounts. It's not hard actually, it's soft mounts. And um, not only does it protect the arms from um yeah from damage, but there's this portion which is a soft mounting for the motor. Now what that does is actually reduce vibrations running through the arm and onto the flight controller which will actually affect the gyro and having too much noise hit the gyro will equate to a lesser performing drone it's gonna be working really hard to stabilize itself up in the air
this top plate covering the flight controller is really a nice touch by Gap RC. No, I have not seen uh, when when I first bought this drone, I have not seen any other drone that comes with such covers. Uh, it it's really keeping the flight controller clean. Hmm, good job. So now the motors and electronics are off from the carbon frame. We can now put this aside. I'm um, going to give it a cleaning, a wipe down afterwards. The, the basics of what is needed in a drone is you'll need your flight controller um, and an ESC, electronic speed controller. Now these two are linked, but they are linked via wire. Um, the first version of this drone used to come with a, a pin connection, meaning to say the two parts were sandwiched. Um, together and in between were pin connections. The problem with the pin connection was that if you were to have a bad crash or whatsoever and the, the FC moves away from the ESC, right? Uh, example, a nudge like this, right? This is gonna cause the pins to break. So um, yeah, Gap RC hurt the, the people and reviewed their design by making it wire connection. Now, these two are also uh, mounted via rubber grommets. This also adds on to re reducing the vibrations that will travel to the flight controller. Currently, I have here is the Gap RC flight controller. It is a F7 flight controller, which I feel I came from F3. Alright, there was F4 and now there is F7. So, F7 is way beyond what I need for my flying for freestyle but of course um, it is keeping up with times um, now for the ESC I it is an all-in-one ESC maybe I can remove some stuff and let you see the ESC in itself ah okay so yeah it was just the grommets were just stuck but yeah here you go this is what an ESC looks like the ESC is an all-in-one meaning to say there are actually four ESCs combined into one right take it that this is one portion to control one motor and yeah so on so forth each one controls the different motors also a so-called a power distribution board because it takes in the power from the battery the power then runs through the ESC and part of that power will then power up the FC so from the FC is then the connection of your receiver. For myself, I'm using a TBS Crossfire receiver. TBS Crossfire module is on my old transmitter, right? So that is good enough for my kind of use. I'm not really going for crazy long range. I guess um, with the DJI FPV, I've gotten comfortable knowing that there are fail safes there, but I don't have a GPS designed in uh, or built into this kit. If I do feel like I want to do any long range, I can always upgrade, add on a GPS chip and do some configuration from there on, right? Yeah, that's the basics. Of course, there is more to the flight controller. Maybe I'll cover that in future episodes, right? But just that you know for now, um, to keep it simple. Simple lah, right? This one not simple eh. But actually, yeah, it's simplified. Now, of course, flight controller, there is connections to it like uh, going through beta flight, the program for it, right? To program it, um, I normally just set in my rates and some basic uh, adjustments here and there. I'm not really going to go hardcore into fine tuning, but maybe when I go through um, that journey of learning about fine-tuning the flight controller then that's where I'll bring you guys along alright so do subscribe for that future episodes okay let's clean this up just a bit before I get to work on the frame Okay, clean enough, right? Now that's going to be set aside. Nice. Alright, these parts are back from the wash. Now I'm left with the air unit.
Oh no! I just realized that my spare set of screws that are meant for the Mark IV are in gold. But the current ones are this kind of like cosmic black kind of color. Ah, I really like this color. This is like the, the kit form and this is this came from the frame only kit. Um, okay, never mind. I guess I'm gonna go with it and just change out the screws that I need for replacement. There is a crack here, but it's just on this top plate. I'm going to ignore that and just leave it as it is because um, I have two screws that are actually holding on to the arm. So there's, and anyways, the arms are touching each other on the inner side. So there's no need really for a change of this top brace until it gets worse maybe, but it's good for now, right? So going, uh, moving along. Okay, so let's see how long it will take me to assemble this drone. Let's go. Should have paused the timer while I clean this. Ah, never mind. Okay, final inspection passed. That is a good to go. Under 45 minutes, not bad. Okay, so one last thing to do with this drone is to give it a test flight. Now I'm gonna wrap it up right here. It's a Friday. Go out there, go meet your friends, family and loved ones. I hope you have learned something from this whole episode. If you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already. Chat with me, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Pilots, as always, I'll see you in the skies. Peace, have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week. Right, bye.